Hi, I'm Joe Brookover, and I'm the Financial Aid Director here at Mercy College of Health Sciences. I'm passionate about bystander training because it allows me to work with students beyond my normal job duties and encourages students to get excited about their role as a future leader in their community. When we consider what a bystander is, terms like witness, observer, or passerby may come to mind. Generally, a bystander is considered someone who is present, but not directly involved with the situation. If you think about it, at most points in our lives, we are all bystanders to a certain extent. Thinking back to the video, who would you consider a bystander? There was her friend, the flatmate, the bartender, the strangers or the men in line, and his friends, they were all bystanders. Others, such as the bouncer or the taxi driver, also had the capacity as bystanders to act and change the situation. So why is it we focus on the bystander? Simply put, the majority of people are not perpetrators or victims. They are bystanders. At any point, you, either during your time as a student at Mercy College or in your career as a healthcare professional, will find yourself in a situation where knowing what to do as a bystander can make a difference. There is power in numbers, and thinking ahead about how to be an active bystander gives you the ability to change the outcome of a situation and even perhaps have a lasting impact on someone's life. A central theme throughout many conversations surrounding sexual violence or assault is the concept of consent. Looking back at the video, do you feel like both parties were giving consent? It's pretty obvious that consent was not given, right? So how do we know when consent is or isn't being given? How do you know someone is interested in engaging in sexual activity? Can it be exhibited by body language? Is there a verbal component? At Mercy College, we go so far as to define consent in our student handbook. The typical phrase you may have heard regarding consent is that no means no. However, at Mercy College, we believe that the absence of no does not mean yes. Only yes means yes. Now that we know what consent is, what's the next step? Asking for consent. Let's be honest. Asking for consent might feel awkward or difficult. While it may not feel like a natural thing to do, it is important to receive consent and to make sure your partner is capable of giving it. As you can imagine, in healthcare, consent is not only essential, but also required by law. You wouldn't just walk up to someone and stick an IV in their arm without first talking to them and obtaining consent, would you? Think about what asking for consent looks like for you, not only in your personal life, but how you may apply this once you're working in your future career. This can be a very ambiguous idea, so let's watch a video that takes this gray area and makes the concept of consent more concrete. And it's okay to laugh.